Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today we've got a match between Rogue and Neeb here on Neon Violet Square, the latter edition. How did I do that? Uh, no, not series complete. That zero and that zero. There we go. Yeah, top right was messed up. Got it fixed. This is from the Hangzhou StarCraft Carnival tournament held in China that wrapped up a couple of days ago. Got it off of lotv.spawningtool.com. Good place to find replays of StarCraft II players that you enjoy watching. And let's get right on into it. In the top left-hand corner of Neon Violet Square, the latter edition, it is the blue Zerg player, Rogue. And in the bottom right-hand corner, it is the red Protoss player, Neeb. So we've got Korea versus the United States of America here. Neeb, far and away the best player from the United States of America, Rogue, actually ended up, ended up winning BlizzCon in 2017 so he's the best player from the entire world as far as that is concerned so this should be a pretty good match i mean i probably wouldn't put my money on neeb at this point but you know what that's why we watched the starcraft they played an entire series at this hangzhou tournament and it wasn't a sweep i'm just going to tell you that much it was not a sweep so i don't know exactly who won this particular game i'm not expecting it to be a crushing by rogue it wouldn't be a very good cast if it was Although sometimes that happens. Sometimes I cast a game that I think is going to be good. And it turns out to be a little bit more one-sided than I was anticipating. I mean, just, we move on. We move on from there. But this I expect to be very hard fought. Neeb is an elite Protoss player. Rogue, very, very, very good. And these players should be butting heads for quite a bit of time here. Good back and forth. Good back and forth on the ZVP pro style stuff. Let's see. Yesterday you guys saw Byun take on True. In a very interesting and very, very good ZVT matchup. If you missed that one, go back and click it. That was fantastic. We saw Rogue take on Maru in a best of five ZVT on Sunday. So the channel's just been full of some really great StarCraft II stuff recently. Hope you are enjoying the content. You'll notice there's been a little bit of an uptick in Brood War content. And that just is because the Brood War Remastered fans are kind of starving for good stuff on YouTube. They just can't find it anywhere. I started casting it kind of just on a whim. I just, I like Brood War, and I figured, hey, if I'm casting StarCraft 2, might as well cast, uh, cast some original StarCraft as well. So I did, and suddenly found a home. I found a home with a lot of people who wanted this. There was demand. So that's why there are two of these a week. StarCraft is still five of the rest of the days, including that full series on Sunday. You can always look forward to Got the Cheese. Oh, we are bringing back the One Trick Wednesday. So put your suggestions in the comments as to what you want to see for the next One Trick Wednesday. Uh, it's just... Basically, the fun day Monday that Day9 stopped doing a while ago, kind of wanted to keep that going. And it basically, it's you come up with an idea, a constraint you place on the players as to what you want them to do. We've done Ghost only. We've done Burrowed Baneling only. We've done Vikings only. We've done You Must Announce Your Attacks Before You Move Across the Map. A lot of these have been pretty popular. So again, put it in the description or put it in the comments as these lings are trying to do stuff, and I just don't see them really accomplishing much. They're scouting, which is actually pretty good. Uh, <laughs> but I'd be surprised if they got any kills here at all. Ooh. Oh, forcing a couple probes off the line here just a little bit. The Stalker going to chase them down, though. And Oh, a probe does die. I take it back. I take it back. I have maligned you, Rogue. You are very capable of doing that one. Third hatch coming down while there's some ling pressure. Just a little bit of link pressure here. This is a very nice wall with a couple of depths and a stalker. There's no way they're getting anything done. And they're actually going to head up the other direction. Maybe. Why are you guys going up here? What do you think is up here? They're checking for a proxy, I guess. Checking for a proxy Stargate, but nope. No such thing here out of the Neeb. And Neeb actually is opening three gate right now with no further tech at all. What a weird build. Oh, there we go. Now it's double Stargate. Here we go. Boop, boop. One, two. Okay, so it is going to be Stargate here. A little bit later than we usually see. Got these three warp gates. Going to be a bit more pressure than I think Rogue is expecting. This number of adepts is a lot more than the two or one you see in the first few minutes of the game. There are some Zerglings here, but I like the positioning. Getting the adepts in these little pink areas means they can't be fully surrounded by the Lings. It is basically home court advantage for anything that is ranged and real bad for melee attack units like the Zerglings are. So, but they were scouted regardless. Ten more Lings on the way. Three Queens ready to make sure these guys can't come up the ramp the normal way. They could possibly shade and don't finish that. Okay. Didn't finish it. There was a whole swell of Zerglings and some Queens there too. So now the Adepts need to get in the... Yep, gonna shade back. 
and force the lings away and then escape into our little plinko machines pachinko plinko it's one of them i think it's just plinko plinko areas of the map where again it is safe i don't know about going back in if rogue was ready 30 seconds ago you think he's gonna actually have fallen apart now yeah there's the cancel just keeps checking just keeps checking some things it is starting phoenix production back home for neeb and taking his pocket expand pretty darn early too Adepts, man, they keep getting so close to finishing that transfer, and then they just don't. Neeb, Neeb is good. Good at this game. APM 400 for Rogue right now, 330 or so for Neeb. These players are very elite. At the game of StarCraft, able to move their fingers quickly and get stuff done. Taking his pocket expand now is Rogue at four bases. So we are, again, really looking at a pretty heavy macro-style game between these two players right now. Adepts just... Kind of putting the fear of Protoss into Rogue. If you move out, these adepts are going to move in. So you better stay home and let me do my thing for a while. Rogue is sitting at 59 workers to 55 for Neeb. Neeb is doing exceptionally well when it comes to his worker count. Double Spore Crawler in the main. Whoa, a couple adepts finished their transfer and got immediately killed. Which is what I was worried would happen. Phoenix Cloud looking good, but there are so many queens here. Yeah, just get out. Just get out. There are six queens, literally, at the third base of Rogue. How? He's just making queens. He hasn't stopped making queens. It's the snoot style here. Free Overlord. Okay, Phoenix kind of starting to pay for themselves just a little bit here. Another one going to go down. Taking some Spore Crawler shots. Picking off some drones. But really, again, I just, I just don't know they're doing enough. They aren't doing enough. Six drones have gone down so far. And it is a bit of a supply block. Zergling's trying to fight these adepts in this area, and it's just bad. It's a bad place to fight. Oh, and they finished the transfer. I wonder if that was a mistake. I wonder if Neve accidentally did that. Because those adepts absolutely died. More overlords are gonna die with this huge phoenix cloud. I'm liking this. Out of Neeb. He's making the queens work for it, man. He is making the queens work for everything that they're doing. It is 13 drones that have gone down now. Big old counterattack of Zerglings trying to do stuff, but this wall is gorgeous. There's just, these links aren't getting in. I like how they kind of stopped curved around one of these squares, interestingly enough. And the Phoenix just getting shoved off. The transfuse is too good on the Queens. It's just, you can't do much. You can't do much here. Macro hatch on the way from Rogue. Fourth base, warping in for Neeb. I don't know if he has enough stuff to hold against this many Zerglings. That's 24 plus Zerglings that are kinda, gonna come in. The force fields need to be elite out of need to make this thing happen to survive this ling attack that is going to come in flying back into the main base with the phoenix cloud still trying to pick off more and more of these drones keeping an eye on these lings ah the bane lings bane lings are a better answer though much better answer all right so bane lings come in and oh actually setting up some gateways maybe to try to move the bane lings away force fields are absolutely gorgeous but now the base is in trouble so the units are alive the base is getting absolutely hammered on amazing force fields again if you could trap these banelings in banelings do explode explode on the zealots forcing a cancel on that fourth base location the phoenix tried to come home and help but they weren't able to get there quite yet gonna have to replant that fourth and try it again try try again phoenix boosting on up here i love this emporio ormoni thing with the Taran wearing the briefs uh, some of you guys are funny. Some of you map makers are absolutely hilarious, is what you are. Corruptor's out. Yep, if your opponent has this many Phoenix, Corruptor are where you want to go with this thing. If you're the Rogue, fifth base, morphing in for Rogue. And really, other than canceling that fourth base, Rogue hasn't really done a lot in trying to shut down Neeb. So, that is the power of Phoenix, man. Woo, had to mute there a little bit. Been very sneezy today for some reason. A very sneezy today. Corruptors heading on out, trying to get some stuff done. I believe they could probably caustic spray down a couple things here. I don't think this is enough Phoenix to make it happen. Yeah, they have to pull out. They have to run. So that means the Corruptors can just fly right in. Toss down a little caustic spray on this Nexus. Are they all caustic spraying? They're all caustic spraying right now. One of the Corruptors dies. Another one is going to die here too. And oh, he didn't do enough damage. Rogue did. What the what? That was weird. Yeah, I maybe mean, set up a couple corruptors, right? Oh, Phoenix getting blasted down to the low ground there. And the Stalker's warping in helped with that too, but really didn't do... I mean, did 20 points of regular HP damage there. The shields will come back for the majority of the damage that was done. Just not worth it. Working on Hydras, though. 
Working on Hydras. More and more Zerglings. Spreading that creep. Getting plus one missile attack and getting grooved spines. The Hydras too. Corruptor is trying to find damage. Trying to find something they can do. But there's already Archons. There's already Immortals. There's a lot of High Templar and Storm is done. I can tell you that much. So Neve wasn't just sitting around twiddling his thumbs while those Phoenix were doing stuff and messing with Rogue. He was teching up. He was creating an army. It is 196 to 156 supply. Neve is down about 50 supply right now, or 40. But he's okay. He's got Archons. He's got the higher tech. He's got a lot of Storm. He's got Immortals. He's got basically what he needs. Although Rogue's morphing in 22 Banelings. 22. Right here. Ah, did I actually... I just realized I messed with the sound. <laughs> with one of my Twitch casts on twitch.tv slash Falcon Paladin because it was too loud for that, but it, not loud enough here. Darn it, first 10 minutes, a bit quiet. A bit quiet on the sound front, but hopefully the balance is a little bit better now. Okay, so it's going to be Ling, Bane, Hydra with Corruptor out of the Rogue. Lings and Banes trying to sneak in this bottom side while the attack comes from the top. For the rest of it, where are these guys going to go? I don't know. Hallucinated Phoenix scouts this thing out. This is just such a scary thing. Scary thing. Out of Rogue. But three uh, carriers on the way here. Banelings going to explode all over that shield battery. Taking two of them out. Archons in the front. Hydras trying to do what they can. But deciding to retreat. Another bit of an attack here up that ramp. And trying to get rid of this fifth base location by Need. Great storm on the ramp. of the Banelings do take down the Cybernetics Core. Which is a pretty big get, but not exactly game-winning damage there. Oh, the storm. Those storms are on point here. Bailing's rolling into Psionic Storm and just getting obliterated. Just absolutely removed from that battle very, very quickly. 68 lings on the way from Rogue. By 68, I mean he had a whole lot more than that at some point. What are we at now? Are we going to get triple-digit lings? It's going to be close. We might get to 100 Zerglings here on the Remax for Rogue. Oh, we just made a ton of Banelings. Dang it. Dang it. We're not going to see it after all. So we just, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again with the exact same strategy here. Ling, Hydra, Baneling. Trying to get rid of this fifth base of Neebs. There are definitely carriers here. And the carriers can be pretty scary. Single Corruptor not going to be enough to stop this thing. Corruptor going to go down. Banelings just growing in, though. Great storm on those Banes. Hydra is just dealing with Interceptors. The fifth base does end up falling here. Beautiful storms. Once again, I don't think going up this ramp is what you want to do exactly here. Rogue and Rogue does decide. It is time to pull on back. Single Overseer. A little bit too slow. Some changelings cleared out too. Immediately replanting his fifth as soon as it is safe to do so. Is Neeb, Blings, and Banelings up north. Possibly going to sneak on in to this fourth base. But double expanding is Rogue. He's got the gold base. He has another one up top here too. This is just Rogue at his most Zergy right now, and I don't know what Neeb can do. He's making carriers. He is. I mean, Rogue doesn't even care to make any more Corruptors. He's just doing this with the units that he has. Bailey exploding on Archons, which is what Neeb wants. Right here, a lot of Interceptors have died, though. A lot of Interceptors. 29 Interceptors have been killed because the Hydra DPS is just so dang good. Plus one attack on those guys. There are a few Corruptors here. Nice storm on the ground units, though. Corruptors trying to use their extra damage versus massive units. Storm clearing the Corruptors out, though. One, two, more storms on the Banelings and the Hydralists. Banelings keep coming, and then they stop coming. Deciding instead to retreat back on home. So Neeb's staying alive. It's just he can't do any damage to Rogue. Rogue hasn't lost a base. Rogue hasn't really lost that many workers, all things considered. 15 drones compared to 38 probes that have been killed in this game. It's 93 to 61 Harvesters. Rogue might be a little bit over... over droned up here. It's possible. It's possible that he is. This does, does allow Neeb to get up a bigger army than Rogue has if there's so many workers sunk into drones on this 200 supply cap. Is he still going... He's still going carrier. Six kills, zero kills, 11 kills on these carriers. They've been pulling their weight. Unless those are all Zergling kills, which they very well could be. So, additional Corruptors here from Rogue. He's got 12 of them. Ooh, 12 feels hammer downy here. It really does. All right, Zerglings right on top of the High Templar. Storms, before they get taken down, turn into an Archon. Storming all the Corruptors here. Corruptors are severely injured, trying to get rid of these carriers. But look at how many of them are in the yellow and the red and the orange, and they're forced to retreat. Once again, Neeb showing incredible defensive skills, keeping his stuff alive. 
with Storm, with carriers, but not able to get back across the map and really bring the Protoss hurt to Rogue. He needs to. He needs to do it here. If he can't, he's going to lose. You can defend, 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 defend all you want. But if you can only... Excuse me. If you can only defend forever, you're still going to lose. You just... You got to be able to get out and kill stuff against a Zerg player like this, against Rogue. Rogue, just another hatch on the way. That's going to be four, five, six, seven. His eighth base? Uh, uh, yeah, he's got eight bases at the 15-minute mark. If you don't have eight bases at the 15-minute mark... You are not as good as Rogue. And there's probably no shame in that. So Archon getting some Void Rays. Void Rays to deal with the Corruptors with their Prismatic Alignment ability. They're very good. They are very, very good against the Corruptor. All right, here come the Lings. Here come the Banes once again. The Storms are beautifully blanketing here. I don't know how many Banes are getting through, but Immortals absorbing a lot of that shot here too. The Corruptor's trying to get rid of as many carriers as they zergily can. Two carriers have gone down, but I don't feel like it's enough. Transfuses with the Queens. What? Oh, the Transfuses are good, but the Void Rays at the bottom of the map. Using their Prismatic Alignment. Saving a lot of these carriers here. These Queens came all the way down. How many Queens are on the map? There are nine Queens on the map right now, and all of them, all of them are at the front. Rogue doesn't even need Injects anymore, you guys. That's the kind of three-dimensional chess that he's playing. He says, Injects? I don't need injects. I just have a lot of hatcheries. Done. Absolutely done. All right. 25 kills on that Archon down below. 33,000 resources lost for Rogue and just 21 for Neep. He's been extremely cost efficient, but he hasn't really been able to expand for a while. He hasn't been able to push out across the creep. The creep spread is basically at his front door, and Neon Violet Square is a very big map. Here comes Rogue again. Storms. Just... The Ling Baneling stuff isn't doing a lot, as near as I could tell. The Void Rays focusing down the Corruptors. The Prismatic Alignment is really good here. The Transfuses are good too, but it's just too much from the Void Ray. And the Queens are forced to pull back once again. I really feel like Rogue is trying to kill Neep here. He's trying to kill him, just trying to put the hammer down, and just can't. Just can't do it. Rogue at 95 workers. Maybe he just can't bring to bear enough of a large army to win the thing. With how many drones he has, but he's not sacrificing workers, I don't think. I don't see him sending them in to die. I don't see him turning them into static defense, which is another way to get rid of that supply. Zerglings up north, I assume they're going to go into Banelings, but... I don't know. I mean, Rogue's map awareness, he sees everything. He sees every part of the map. There's no hidden bases for Neeb. Absolutely not here. The League's not quite sure what they want to do. And as a result, they're forced to retreat. Baneling sneaking into that mineral line. And 64 probes have gone down. At 63 to 91. Total supply. APM on average for this game. 380 for Rogue and 316 for Neeb. Zergling attack up north. I really don't think... Again, they're doing much damage, but perhaps just clearing out supply. 26 kills on that Archon. It's pretty great. Basically clearing out some of the creep here, but it just feels like you're prolonging the inevitable here. Mr. Neeb, I like ya. I like you a lot, good sir, but we gotta, I don't know, gotta see something. We gotta see you push out, push back some creep, kill a base or two, a five infestors in production for Rogue. It's got pathogen glands here too, started before they were built, so they will start with that additional 25 energy. Zerglings and Hydra trying to make some trouble up north here at the third base location. Uh, this is enough carrier, I think, especially with the plus two attack to chase them away, and indeed... It is. Plus three air weapons on the way. I feel like they'd already have plus three, except the Cybercore got killed earlier. If you remember that, that one attack uh, with the Banelings, they did take down the Cybercore previously. All right, so here he goes. It's not a straight Sky Toss army, but it is a lot of carrier Void Ray. Seven carriers, four Void Rays, some High Templar here too. Oh, look at all that static defense. Look at all these spores. There we go. That is what I was talking about. A lot of static defense here. The Zealot's going against this Queen Infester thing until Cracklings catch up with them, though. Plus three attack on those Zerglings. No other upgrades at all, surprisingly. And here it is. This is going to be our final confrontation. I feel like Fungal going down on the Sky Toss. Not exactly what you want. Spore Crawlers burrowing into place quite nicely. Void Rays trying to finish off these Corruptors, but taking Fungals to the face. This Blanket Storms are good! Storming his own units a little bit there. That Archon has 37 kills, but not many shields left for him. And that's really all that Archons are. It's a big ball of shields and a tiny little body inside. 
Zerglings trying to run down and do some stuff. Trying to take this gold base as knee, but the Cracklings say, uh-uh. It's not allowed. You cannot have that, I'm afraid. 168 to 154 supply right now. Somehow Neeb. Somehow Neeb is up in total supply, which means his army supply is a lot bigger. Static defense is helping immensely right here. The transfuses on the spores are sick. Out of Rogue. Seriously, transfusing is just isn't even fair in that situation. 22 Banelings on the way from Rogue. He says, I know it's generally a Sky Toss army, but Banelings are going to be okay, right? These Queens are all actually fairly low on energy. A couple of them are looking okay. How many Interceptors have died so far? 160 Interceptors have died so far. There are 56 on the field right now with three being made at a time. I mean, Neeb needs to break out. He needs to have a really decisive win here to even have a chance to win this thing. Banelings crushing. Archon's doing a pretty good job of it, though. The Templar have been kept alive, which is the goal. Sneak attack from the backside by the Lings. The Archon's trying to do what they can with that one, too. The Blanket Storms are so good. Wow. Queen's getting melted by the Psionic Storm. Static defense not going to be enough here. Not with these Archons on the ground. Hero Archon, 23 kills on that one it's suddenly 163 to 126 total supply in production of three corruptors and some zerglings but is it gonna, it could, did neeb do this neeb pulls it off what neeb is victorious rogue taps out with the gg neeb does not want to leave and then he finally does <laughs> and neeb is your winner against rogue oh man okay you know you know what i said there you can't win without pushing out. And he finally, at the 19-19 minute mark, he decided it was time to push. Time to push out. And he did. And he did. And all Rogue had was 34 Lings and 3 Hydras. How? Okay, this is one of the more cost-efficient games I've ever cast in my entire life. I just... 34,000 resources lost for Neeb compared to 57,000 resources lost. For Rogue, I guess we've seen similar numbers in Mech versus Zerg games that have gone on a while, where the Mech is just incredibly cost efficient. But look at these guys: twenty kills, eighteen kills, seven kills, twenty kills, five kills, seven kills, thirty-one kills on the carriers. Archons with ten, eighteen, twenty-three, six. These guys both have six. Mm. Eh. Immortal twenty, good. But yeah, look at all these units with twenty plus ten plus kills on them. That's how you do. That's how you do as Protoss. I. Uh, Rogue threw the kitchen sink at him. Basically tried to kill him over and over and over again. For the first 20 minutes of this game, Neeb said, all right, finally, it's time to go. There just weren't resources. Mind out was Rogue. Mind out, mind out, mind out. Uh, that's a mining base. That's a mining base. That's a mining base. And this one, too. I don't know. He was just spending really well. He only had 600 minerals at the end of the game. Didn't have enough to make enough of a big enough army to deal with this thing. I know I'm repeating myself a lot. Have enough of a big enough. Anyway. Anyway, crikey. What a win for the ages there from Neeb. He's going to remember this one for a while. How many kills do you guys have? 13 and 14? That's pretty good. That is pretty good. But yeah, 513 Lings died. 49 Hydralisks. 225 Banelings. That's so many Banelings. 39 Corruptors. 5 Infestors. 10 Queens. Most of them because they were at the front lines. And then it's three carriers died of Neebs. Three. He made a total of 12. And he lost three this entire game. That's just filthy. Did lose 197 Interceptors, though. There's a lot of Interceptors. 50 Zealots, 6 Immortals, 17 Archons is a big number, too. And those Phoenix, man, those Phoenix in the early game really keeping Rogue off his back. Paid for themselves for sure, even if I think they all died. Pretty sure they all died, and they did. Oh, All right. Well, that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, as well as Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.